intro because uh, without him, this uh, open mic wouldn't be going on right now. He's been kind of a linchpin in the Kitsap comedy scene with booking and helping get things rolling because I'm unmotivated as hell, so good thing there's a guy like him around. Guys, give a warm round of applause to one of my favorite comedians in this area, Mr. Joseph Rogers. Oh, man. Man, you guys are great tonight. Thank you very much for coming out, everybody. Yeah, let's hear it for you guys. Yeah. You came to laugh, I love it. All right, let's get started. Oh, uh, shit. Oh, I gotta tell jokes now. Um, yeah, so apparently I've kind of gotten this reputation as the guy that looks like Jesus telling dick jokes. So I'm gonna try to end that now. No dick talk tonight. I think we've had enough of that anyway. So it's good. It's good. But, uh, anybody here got kids that got early release? Yes. Yeah, one day out of the week? I fucking hate that shit. I'm unemployed, so sometimes I forget what day it is. My son came home early from school the other day and caught me twerking. Yeah, that was embarrassing as fuck. And I didn't even know. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to start a new dance. He said, that's not a new dance, that's twerking. I said, what? Is it just me or does twerking sound like working while you're tweaking? I don't know. That's what I thought it was at first. It's like, that's not what I'm doing. No, tweakers are great though. <laughs> it's funny because I live in Bremerton, so it's like no matter where I've moved in Bremerton, there's always been a tweaker neighbor. <laughs> can't stand that shit. It's like they, they put up their floodlights at 2 a.m. in the morning and start mowing it and shit. Like, what the fuck? Fucking building a go-kart and shit. They put an engine on each tire and they can't figure out why it's not going straight. Leaking oil everywhere. And then one of their engines catches on fire and I'm like, oh, motherfucker, I'm not helping you. <laughs> I talk shit to my tweaker neighbors all the time. Except for this one time when my lawnmower broke down and I was like, hey, can you fix this for me? <laughs> they got it back to me in like five minutes, working great. <laughs> Maybe you guys aren't so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a couple kids. Kids are great. I love my kids. Yeah, kids are awesome. Yeah, kids are the reason why we drink, right? <laughs> you just don't drink while you're pregnant. I had to go, I'm good. Oh, okay, that's good. I wasn't saying anything. But, uh, no, it's funny because my 13-year-old, um, he just graduated fifth grade a couple years ago. And it's crazy because... You didn't think my son would graduate fifth grade? Is that funny? Well, you know, it's cute because that's what they call it nowadays, they graduate. Okay, you're not really graduating, but hey, fifth grade. Sometimes I failed fifth grade and still passed. So, <laughs> no student behind. <laughs> Thank you, Bush. No, but, uh, I guess in fifth grade, on the last day of school, they have field day, but they also have sex ed day. And I'm like, I think fifth grade's a little too soon to be having the talk with my child. And uh, I picked him up from school on the last day, and I said, how was your day today? He said, I don't know, it was a bit overwhelming. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm thinking field day. I was like, why is that? He said, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Look at this book they gave me. Penis, vagina, prostitute gland. I'm like, what? <laughs> Give me that book. I'm like, oh, prostate gland, okay. <laughs> You had me thinking there was something new in the anatomy of a man that I didn't know about. <laughs> Maybe they should have called it prostitute glam, but that's a whole other story. I said, let's change the subject. What sounds good for dinner? He says, I don't know. I think I lost my appetite. I was like, what? What was it, the penis or the vagina? Never mind, don't answer that. You still got time to figure that out. <laughs> so then he goes to middle school, right? And then apparently he was dating this girl that I didn't know about, and the things didn't work out. He came up to me and he goes, Dad, my girlfriend broke up with me. And I said, sweet. He said, what, why is that sweet? 
And so we just never know with kids nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I'm proud of you. But he said, Dad, when do I know I found the right one? And I said, well, son, I'm just going to be honest with you because I would wish that's what my dad would have done with me. You know you found the right one when you find one that's willing to go to six to nine and back to six again. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and he goes, I don't need help with my math homework, Dad. <laughs> I was like, I'm not talking about math. Six to nine and back to six again. He looks at me and he goes, three? I'm like, ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Forget it. You'll figure it out one day. And I also got a seven-year-old and uh, he was just in kindergarten. And it's so cute because in kindergarten, they got this poster that they make where it's like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite show? All this stuff. One of the cool things is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, you know, I've been unemployed for the last four years and my son just turned seven. So the most of his life, he knows daddy is being unemployed. So he put, he wants to be like his daddy. And I thought that was cute. But then at the end of the year, they make him get in front of the whole class with the parents there and everything. And he said, I want to do what my daddy does. And one of the parents yells out, what does your daddy do, boy? My son said, he stays at home, plays video games all day. <laughs> I was like, what? Grabbed him, I was like, hey, now come here, you little fucker. All right? It's not easy being ranked in the top 100 of Call of Duty and Halo at the same time. Okay? I'm putting in work. You don't know what it's like to have to save a princess from a toadstool, do ya? You've never had to save Carmen San Diego or fucking go on the Oregon Trail and survive, have you? God, kids just don't get it. I'm putting in work. God. I used to be married. I'm glad you guys think that's funny. No, it was crazy because, I mean, we were young, and she was a, she was the crazy redhead type. And I'm not talking ginger redhead. I'm talking like Pizza Hut red redhead. Okay, real crazy, like Pizza Hut red. I'm not suggesting anything. But you two chicks look fucking crazy to me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm having flashbacks right now. So anyway. You know, there was probably some warning signs that I should have known that my marriage was fizzling and not really going the way it should have. One of the warning signs was we thought going to a swinger party was a good idea. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Turns out when you're the best looking couple, that's not a good thing. Because they want everything to do with you. And you want nothing to do with them. But my wife was a crazy slut, she, she was down with it still. She goes, what's wrong with you? Why are you so tense? And I said, I don't know. I think I'm at like a diabetes convention right now. <laughs> like, I wouldn't fuck these people if I was rolling on 10 ecstasies. <laughs> and I think I saw that chick working at Jack in the Box. <laughs> fuck this. So I should have known then, but I was naive. I didn't know any better. One of the other warning signs was I came home work from early one day and I caught her masturbating to an episode of Ellen. <laughs> what? I also sold my wedding ring for an Xbox and she didn't even notice. It wasn't even an Xbox 360, it was one before that. Fuck, fail. I should have known my marriage was probably over when one time during sex she asked me to use a strap on instead. Yeah. But you know what? I went with it. I was like, okay, alright, we'll give it a try. It was probably one of the only times I made her come. And I was like, okay, it's my turn. She goes, no, I'm going to sleep. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, now you know how it feels, motherfucker. <laughs> my marriage might be over, I don't know. No, it was crazy because uh, one time my ex-wife, she caught me watching porn. And that was really awkward. She goes, you're married to me, you're not allowed to watch porn. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll give it up. And then I thought to myself, I got it. I thought I found a loophole, right? So I masturbated and I videotaped it and I started masturbating to that. <laughs> yeah, cell porn. <laughs> Makes complete sense, right? <laughs> but then I got sloppy and she caught me doing that. She goes, hey, I told you no more porn. <laughs> 